Hello, thieves. It is time to begin here in an age undreamed of. And as we stand, I would like you to take in this scene, not of a time known, not of a time unknown, but of a time that was. Perhaps forgotten by some, perhaps remembered by many. But in this time, there were heroes, villains, rage, violence, and victory. This is the world of Robert E. Howard. This is Conan. But this is our particular story and our particular slice of this particular world. And as we drill down into this world, the first thing that we see is a host of campfires spread from hillock to hill through the valleys, thousands of them. The host of this army must be substantial. It must be without, without peer. But as they look and as you see these campfires, we drill into one in particular. Surrounding this campfire are at least 10 shadows. And as these 10 shadows mill about, laughing, the wind carrying tails and smoke and the smell of ale and wine, five of these faces lean closer to the flame. And as they are revealed, they all think of one particular tale. And now I would like to introduce our characters as we go around and if you would all briefly describe who you are, what you like, what you look like, and perhaps a hint of the type of person you'll be playing. Let's start just below me with Brew. Brew, tell us about yourself. I was muted in Zoom. So what I will tell you is I was here to introduce the characters. So Brew, go right ahead and tell us about yourself, a little bit about your character, but more importantly, what they look like. All right, uh, I am playing Zatoro, the Zingaran Buccaneer, who looks upon the Argosian merchant ships like fatted calves for the slaughter. Uh, Zatoro is, uh, he is nice enough. He is genial enough. Uh, on the outside, but on the inside, he is a little more cold and calculating. Like, he may be telling a joke to you, but also thinking, eh, how much are you worth on the open market? Uh, could he make a coin off of you? Uh, he is tall and thin, uh, rakishly so, with rakish features and uh, pointy, uh, pointy goatee coming off of his chin, a uh, few scars on his face, dark complexion like most Zingadans are. Uh, very calculating features, hawkish. Perfect, perfect. And with that little taste, we will go down to Lauren. Lauren, tell us about your character, a bit about what she looks like, and uh, maybe a hint as to what type of person she is. Yes, uh, today I am playing Cinna. Uh, she's an escaped slave, so maybe don't sell her, Brew. That would be cool. Um, <laughs> She is really good with a bow and arrow, because that's on brand. Uh, she's from Zamora, the city of thieves, um, but probably more um, with an Aquilonian, kind of the jewel of civilization vibe about her. She is pale with freckles covering like every inch of her body, really light uh, bluish lavender eyes, uh, red hair in a braid, as is typical of your archer girl. She is, uh, I wrote calculated and distrustful in my little personality block. We'll see exactly how long that lasts. I'm guessing five minutes, but I'm excited. Calculating and distrustful. It doesn't remind me of anyone. Let's go over to Cap. Cap, tell us a little bit about your character. Maybe a hint about who they really are, but more importantly, what do they look like? Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today I am playing um, Artigan. He is a a very old wandering mercenary um, in his fifties, or whatever uh, the equivalent of the fifth uh, someone in their fifties was for the Hyborian age. He has very long white hair and a very long white beard. 
it, you know, it's he's not a young man anymore. Very, very small, very rounded eyes, a look of seriousness about them, and he was a man who, from Carolinfia originally, he was a man who was just a simple smith, followed in his family's footsteps, till some noble decided to take objection to him, duelled him, Artigan won. Uh, had to go on the run because Corinthia is <laughs> quite frankly Corinthia. So for the past 35 years this man has been a wandering mercenary and um, he's not the smartest tool but he's very very good with a sword and now he's youth has left him and basically his vigor has not completely gone so he knows he hasn't got much time left so he's going to enjoy what he has left enjoy the last few rides awesome awesome okay uh yes music's still too a bit loud everybody i will drop her okay um so as we pan away from artigan let's go down and alice could you tell us about your character who she is and uh more importantly what does she look like okay um i'm playing roda and she is quite young, um, athletic build, a little bit short, um, which uses to um, her advantage. Um, she loves the ocean, um, is her main thing. She has dark, um, dark hair that is in a long plait all the way down her back and ties um, a brightly sc colored scarf around her forehead to keep any hair out of the way in case it impedes her in what she's doing. Um, she's quite a cheery character, but at the same time, you do not want to get on the wrong side of her. Excellent. She is, would we say, cheerfully serious? Cheerfully serious, I think. Cheerfully serious. We Probably for, yeah. my favorite descriptor <laughs> in a long, long time. So as we go from che cheerfully serious to a man who is always just the salt and seriously the the boards the stalking shakespearean presence my man scrat tell me a little bit about yourself a little bit about your character and more importantly what's he look like and how i'm gonna live up to that intro wow thank you um okay so torg torg is uh everything about torg says practicality okay he doesn't wear many clothes but the ones that he does cover or protect sand masks loincloths keeps it nice and simple short hair none of this long business you're gonna get yourself killed by. um he uh <laughs> he's a muscle built man some might say oil um and ugly surprisingly ugly popped out nose his jaw looks large and and out of place, his cheeks almost look just ugly, just beautifully ugly is the description. So ugly, he is beautiful in his own right. And uh, I tell you, today could be a dog's day. Yes, it could be. So thank you all, everybody. I appreciate it very much. But what we will do at this moment is, as we see these characters, we see them not on the field of battle. We see them not at the aforementioned campfire because this is a retelling. This is a flashing back to a story that they all experienced many years ago. And around that campfire, this is the tale that is told. They are in a cave. In this cave is an older man uh, perhaps of the same age as Artigan, right in, in his 50s. Uh, he has a grizzled, gray and salt-peppered beard, but more salt than pepper. And as he kind of hurries around, he reveals through the chipping of stone, a large piece of rock is broken away. And just beneath this rock, heard before seen, is a rushing torrent. Quicker than any of the surface rapids, this shoot of pure water is rushing from one point to one unknown. But as the man looks and water sloshes and sprays out of this tube that he's revealed with this rock, he turns to the others and he goes, see, 
My words were right. It's here. All we need to do is ride it, and we'll be straight away into the vault. And as the five of you turn to regard this man, the man that you know as Gerald, he turns and goes back to his work of widening this hole as it seems he's almost chipping away at a pipe, some type of ceramic edifice that is carrying uh, the water from this point to the unknown point. And as he continues to do that, you all think back as to why you are here. And why you are here is this. You want to steal from the Turanian Empire. Here in the house of Takin Aga, best friend and closest ally to the great Khans of House Yildiz, they helped carve the land from the prior inhabitants and establish the kingdom of Turan. For such loyalty, the house of Takin Aga and its descendants were named Lord of the Steppes, Guardian of the Wastes, and the Western Edge and Dominion of the Turanian Empire. Now, in addition to this title and land, the Lord of the Steppes was given a legendary jewel as a reward for their continued obedience. The jewel was called the Heart of Krom, and legend had it that luck and strength was gifted to those that possessed it. Mingled with the other spoils of war, the Lord of the Steppes had, vault, had a vault erected during his citadel's construction and placed this vault in the very middle of his might. The heart of Krom was then placed in a petrified eagle talon in the center of the vast gilded chamber by Emperor Yildiz himself. Mortal hands, including the Lord's own, have not touched the heart since. The man before you who has just cracked open this pipe is Gerald, last of a line of the surviving architects of the citadel within the fortress, or the vault within the citadel. His grandfather told his father, his father told him, there is a way in. And while they killed every other laborer, every other mason on the project, his grandfather escaped. His grandfather plotted, knowing that he would not be able to seek revenge for his fallen friends. He knew his son would not be able to seek revenge for his fallen friends, but he knew if he used the line of his name to bide time, he would be able to seek retribution in the form of theft, to take back what they had made with their blood and spilled and drawn with their hands, this vault within the citadel. Well, what it protected was the heart of Krom. And so Gerald and his father and his grandfather plotted until the day when they knew they could sneak in, they could steal the heart and return a debt to a house riddled with evil. And so Gerald conscripted the five that you see around you to sneak into the vault and Gerald has a very foolproof plan, one that was told to him in lieu of bedtime stories. As his generations prior had built the Turanian fortress, he knows the way in. You must travel through this sluice. This sluice was built in the event of a siege. If this siege were to encompass the city of Afif, the royal family would hide in the vault and be able to stay there for months with water and stored grains. But knowing where the chute is in this sluice of natural uh, water, you can ride it directly into the vault. And as Gerald opens up the area and looks back at the five of you, he says, all we need to do is ride. Keep your eyes peeled. And when we pop up in the vault, grab hold of something. It's wide open. But if you miss, the falls are on the other side. And then he begins to prepare himself to climb into this water. What would the five of you like to do? Just a quick question for clarification. We knew that riding this sleuth would be a part of the plan. Correct. Correct. In that case, my character is not that stupid. He will not have his armor <laughs> equipped for this. An excellent decision. <laughs> so it's like a it's like an underground pipe. 
It seems to be naturally made, well, yeah. but it was constructed as it's about a five foot wide pipe that he's now pulled like a section off of. Uh, it seemed to be covered in kind of loose, almost porous rock that was all kind of wept the water as it sep uh, seeped through the outside of it. But he knew where it was or had been told by his grandfather or his father who had been told by his grandfather. And as he cracks it open and reveals it, it looks like a tube with dark, rushing water going through it to a point unknown. As Gerald explains it, should you ride this tube, all you need do is just wait until you pop up in the vault by his guess, 30 seconds later, grab hold of something and be able to pull yourself up into the Citadel. Well, we all knew this was the plan. Come on! And jumps. Oh, he is so excitable. Every time, everything we've been doing, it's just like, let's go. Great. Okay, so Gerald's up first and Gerald is standing there as he's getting ready to go in. And he says, the boy will meet us with the horses. Just remember, river, vault, the sun, the sunrise tunnel, the fountain, the horses, and freedom. We can do this. River, vault, sunrise tunnel, the fountain, horses, and freedom. And he jumps in. Oh. Very well. And then I go. Okay, so tell me in the order in which you guys jump in, and I will tell you what I need you to do. <laughs> I'm going to be somewhere up front. Uh, I, I, I don't mind if uh, me or uh, Arthur can go first, but uh, I'll be jumping up. I'm eager. Okay, very well. Then we will begin these rolls of the campaign as we dive into and sit back. And by the way, I would like to as a point of reference, we have an intro video that is currently being rendered. If we have it ready by the end of the session, I will show it to everyone. Also, we have, we have five other people that will be coming into uh, this campaign. They will be floating in and out. There will be made mention of them as at the end as well. Also, down below, you can see where donations and cheers can help the characters. You're going to see in a second why they're going to need help. So as Gerald jumps into the water and disappears in a whip sucked through the tunnel. Um, we are going to have Torg as he rolls and jumps in after. Torg, what I'm going to need from you is an observation skill check. And so... Oh, no. <laughs> at, no. no. As you're riding through, there's no swimming required as you're just being thrust down through this area. Um, you just have to wait, and as Gerald said watch for the opening and as soon as you see the opening grab something because you'll quickly be thrown back into the tunnel and through over the falls and dice value is two correct mm. okay <laughs> so as you are traveling through there you don't see anything um, you don't know where you're supposed to get out. You're not sure exactly how long 30 seconds happens to be. Um, so you're just going to keep riding. Who's coming next? It's me. I'll go after him. Okay. Right. Artigan, let's see what you have. Tunnel of water. Give me sight beyond sight. Uh, observation? Mm. Correct. Okay. That's into my, uh, um, unskilled, but... Oh, well, better than nothing. Let's give it a smash. Mm. Oh, that's a crit fail as well. That is a crit <laughs> failure. So, um, die before the first bit. <laughs> as you almost like the GM was like, they've got no observation skills. Here we go. It's almost like the GM was like, none of these people can notice anything. Let's make a notice skill check. No, this was part of it, but it just so happened to be the very first one. <laughs> um, so as you're you, again into the darkness art again, you can't see anything around you that uh, thank you for the follow that dictates um, when you're supposed to get off of this crazy ride. So who's next? Me. It is I. Um... I turn to Rhoda. See you on the other side. Don't overshoot it, please. She just Don't. sort of salutes you as you disappear down there. Okay. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good skill. 
Okay, so as you're shooting through again, uh, you're counting out 28, 29, 30. This doesn't seem any different. You know, you just see water around you. Nothing that would dictate that there's something that needs has changed. Who's next? Um, I think Rhoda would probably hop in following. And please say I see something. One. <laughs> Okay, so Alice, as Rhoda jumps in and she's going through, she, you know, counting down in her head and she realizes right around 2930, you see a change in the, like, the watercolor and that, that variation in shade. And you reach your hand out and grab hold of a rock as you extend beyond where the tunnel or the sluice was. And you're able to stop and pull yourself and roll yourself out of the water. You are alone. I was going to say, can I see any of the others? Or? You hear, Yeah, you hear a commotion off to your left. And before I tell you what that is, uh, Brew, let's have your guy come down and we'll, we'll very just good, have uh, him. Very good. Zotoro will, uh, will hop into the stream last, uh, protecting the flank, of course. And uh, he, will, uh, he will see what he sees as well. Oh, great. Okay, so almost making up for everybody's mistakes, uh, Zatoro, as you come through, not only do you succeed in what you've done, you go beyond it. And you actually have scored three successes, which will enable me to give the entire party some extra momentum. Now, what I'm going to allow you to do uh, Zatoro, as you are coming out and you see the entire way, you can basically see rock, 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 air. And before anybody else, you reach up and grab hold. You can see Rhoda pulling herself up onto the shore. What you also see is kind of sliding and slipping well beyond a point where they should be getting out. The next person in line, which would be Senna, as she is kind of sliding. I will allow you at this moment to spend a point of your newly earned momentum to see if you can't get a grab out her and if you spend a point of momentum I will allow you to grab her um yeah we'll go ahead I mean you know I mean if you if you've got it yeah I mean it's it's there for a reason and uh, I think Lauren would probably hit me later you would be right yeah so uh, you, you we'll go be, ahead and right. we'll go ahead and spend the momentum but don't let that sway you bro no no it's that's totally not it. That's, no, yeah. But we'll uh, we'll go ahead and grab. Uh, we'll spend the momentum so that uh, I, we can grab her. Okay, so you reach down and grab Senna as you're able to pull her out. However, we have Artigan and more importantly Torg, who are rocketing well past the get-off point of this ride. And Torg, what I'm going to have you do is there was a complication rolled, and by no fault of your own. Um, I'm going to need you to do this, the, the following. I need an athletics check from you. I need an athletics check from Artigan as you guys are now worried and beginning to try to forcefully slow yourself down, but you're not observing your surroundings, so you're kind of trying to do it inside the water. Um, give me one of those. We're looking just for a, a single success here. Wait, you, you could use fortune, maybe. Another you crit fail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Torg, you are able to X yourself into there. You you skin up your hands and your knees because, as you said, you're basically nude. And so as you... And the water is sluicing over your oiled frame much faster than everybody else. And so as there's less friction, you're able to kind of slip your way into this position. However, as Artigan hits you for two critical failures, and as those critical failures hit, I also am awarded one, two, doom. Um... You kind Only of do one. a pin. You did a. There's a critical failure before, um, that I didn't award myself for anything. There was a. Uh, yeah, the uh, your original roll art again. You had a twenty, and so. No, I got that, it. My bad. Right. So um, with those two doom, uh, what I'm going to do is this: as Gerald is able to stop and slow himself, and he's just about ready to pull himself out of the sluice. He is smashed by Torg, who is smashed by Artigan, and Gerald slips into the tube and disappears. However, you two are stopped, and Gerald is gone. 
Is there a way to, uh, I mean, do we see the falls from where we are? Or um, are they further along the tube? Who rolled a good observation? It was uh, I can Zatoro. actually re-roll observation, which I forgot about. Okay, you can re-roll your observation right here then, if you'd like. Okay. And okay. Uh, Zatoro, I, I will one. say this. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, there's yeah anybody that had a success on observation, um, you all hear a scream. Like a falling scream, Greg. Like a, yeah, like a, oh! <laughs> you know, as he drops I think Rhoda into... will Im immediately, if she can, try and run to the scream or at least get to a close enough position. Uh, Rhoda, yeah, you uh, with your observation, you could see where it was going, and you were able to run up and kind of meet the as the water slips back into the tunnel. You can get there, and just beyond this tunnel, you can see where it spills and drops as the light of this room ends and the darkness of the tunnel continues. And you realize that as you get there, you hear the scream. Several seconds pass, and you hear what sounds like rock hitting rock. Uh, real quick, uh, Greg, as a uh, as a free action, you know, just uh, can I uh, can I sit back and think uh, for a moment that it's it's a good thing because that means more money for the rest of us if someone's gone. Yes, you this this thought crosses your mind as you know, uh, one fifth is bigger than one sixth. So it yes the the the, the greed of thieves is prevalent as you know a beer will be his memory. Um, you guys are inside this new chamber. What would you like to do? Well, I'm glad I wrote down what he said, since he will not be saying it again. Hmm? Yes. Good. Great. What's, uh, what does the chamber look like? Well, as you turn around, yeah, it, it it's lit by candles, but they're more ceremonial in nature. They're not meant for light. There aren't lanterns around. There isn't anything that would kind of uh, allow for deep introspection or deep observation of the entire room. So there are pockets of light here and there. However, in each of these pockets, you can see a, a the guild of this place where everything seems to either be made of gold or a precious metal or a precious jewel, but they also, it's painted with it, intricate artwork, inlay carved into the marble of the place. Everything seems to have taken artisans and craftsmen and laborers years to complete as it is built in, as these marble structures come from the very sheets and plates of the marble walls themselves. Everything kind of highlighted specifically by these accent candles that are everywhere. But beneath a warrior, there is one that's just positioned underneath a left armpit to reveal a mighty chin as the light creeps up. And beyond that, you see that there are boxes, and many of them are open, that are spilling treasures of different nations. As you can see here, there are bronze plates, and there are silver bowls in this area. There are jewels the size of uh, uh, hack silver balls, where they're roughly the size of a fist. And they seem to be absolutely everywhere. And as it creeps up, the walls themselves, as the marble leaves, you can see that the floor is made of a carved sandstone, as in it itself is intricately ruined with figures and glyphs, many of which you do not understand, but many of them are simple. The rising of the sun, mountaintops, a river. And as you're kind of looking at the floor and looking around at everything else, the sandstone bleeds into these beautiful mosaic tiles. And everywhere there's the smell of ginger and jasmine, as you're pretty sure that these candles have something baked into them. And as everything kind of creeps up and as everything is taken in in this long look about, your eyes finally settle on something that is predominantly lit. And it seems to be a huge gem, roughly the size of a man's head. And it rests in what looks like an eagle's talon, inverted and lifted. This is what we are looking for. Yeah. Unless, unless it is a clever ruse that was uh, put here to throw us off the scent. Perhaps it is a trap. Uh, go up and see if you can touch it. This is too easy. 
Nothing is that simple. And she sort of puts her hand out, so just in case Sin does go to I would walk not, towards I do it. Not take <laughs> I do yeah. not take orders from this man, no. And she looks at him and she says, why don't you go touch it? Yeah, why don't you go touch it? Yeah, why don't you? Oh, you mean me. <laughs> Uh, okay. you know no, very well. Don't, no, 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 I don't know, that's what it says. Identify all of the clues that you currently consider important in the area. I'm looking for any kind of triggery things. Sure, absolutely. Uh, we will make this a simple difficulty of one since you have all the time in the world, presumably, as there's no one else around here. You're inside a vault that appears not to have any doors. Right, this is very strange. But friends, this is the heart of Krom, Krom himself. Crit. We must touch it. We're okay. going done looking. <laughs> like Tog's halfway there, you know. Like, no, I'm looking. Stop it. Seeing this is it is here. God, no. As you're looking around, Senna, you see that uh, there don't appear to be any traps. Um, and as you have beaten that as well, I will give you guys two additional momentum. Um, do, do, um. And as you look around, you don't see anything that these appear to be legitimate boxes that are just sitting filled with gold and silver and spoils of war. Um, do you get up and observe the heart of Krom in this mm -hmm. role that you had? Okay, so as you get up, you notice that the four claw of the eagle talon, upon further inspection, seems to have a hinge placed in it. It's very subtle. It's at the base, just underneath, um, and it's almost hidden in one of the wrinkles of the petrified talon, but it is a very, now that you can see it, a very obviously man-made hinge. Like, it looks like, does it look like it would, the claw would, like, fall open, or, does, yeah, does it look, like, weighted with the stone? It looks like it's counterweighted with the stone. If the stone weren't there, it would t it would drop away. It would drop behind it. Ha uh ha. -huh. Looky, looky. I point it out to everybody. Don't touch it. Please. What? Don't touch what? This? I will don't. cut off your finger. Thank you for saving my life. I will cut off your finger. So, but maybe if we touch it quickly and run. No. I think this something this requires something a little bit more tactful than you also, talk. So there are no doors in here. Do you see this? So if something goes shoots out or fills this, where are we going to go? Over the falls. Clearly there is a door somewhere. They had to have a, a means of egress uh, into and out of this this chamber. There is certainly a door around here somewhere. And I'd like to make try to like use observation to look around if I can. Yeah, if you're looking specifically for exits or entrances, absolutely go yeah. ahead. Okay. Okay, great. And I'll give you another momentum for that as I'm keeping everything at a DC of one this time to help you guys get into the swing of things and help me get into the swing of things. Um, as you are sitting there looking around, uh, Satoro, you are able to find not a door and not an exit, but you can see several places where there may be an entrance from the other side. But the one during this observation that kind of calls out to you more than anyone else is that you see what appears to be a relief of um, a sunrise. And there's something in your mind that clicks when you look at it um, and while this one doesn't seem as obvious as the other ones that you looked for, you do realize that there, there's space behind this door. This, whatever it is. If these are indeed doors, this is a hidden one that maybe hasn't seen much use. Is there, uh, do I get the feeling that maybe I can push on the relief to, to access it or? Uh, it would, it, to you, it doesn't seem to budge at all. 
if you kind of just like gingerly moved it. It doesn't seem, it seems that there's something that needs to be done to either unlock it or perhaps a, a, a third location that would allow it to be unlocked. But from this position, something further needs to be done. All right. I would uh, look at uh, Cinna and say, this, this relief right here, this is a key to getting us out of this chamber. As I said, there is a there is an an exit to this chamber. We just we must find the other parts of the puzzle. Good. So nobody touch the stone until we do that. Maybe. Wait. Ah. Which which stone? The stone. Don't touch or... it. I swear to. Rhoda just slaps his hand away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start. Um, is there anything like if there's a sunrise or is there any relief that's like a sunset or something thematically opposed to the one he pointed out? Um, make a, I tell you what, um, with, in c combination with your earlier observation, make a survival check for me. I can do this. I think I have. And what's everybody else doing at this time? Uh, Artigan, Rhoda, and Torg. Are you guys stuffing pockets? Are you waiting for orders? Are you? Artigan is, um, I'm just, uh, I'm just standing there i've basically been hired as the proverbial protection muscle for this thing um i agreed there's some loot there's some plunder but uh there's no point in looting and plundering he knows this much at least there's no point in looting and plundering until we find a way out of here the only thing that he's thinking of right now and he will speak up and say is maybe we have to replace the weight of the heart with some other object lose the heart hand talon tilts trap sprung yes it's a good call i like so, it so i shall uh in that case then uh, i shall look around for anything that uh, may be able to um replace the heart or what we're thinking is the heart uh replace it weight wise if there's anything in the room um i tell you what roll an observation for me while uh let's see uh rhoda and torg what are you guys doing um rhoda is trying to make sure no one touches it at the moment because people seem to really want to touch this thing and she's just sort of almost standing guard every now and again if there's like a gold some gold on the floor or something she's just leaning down and putting it in her pocket like not stuffing it in her pocket but if there's one close enough she'll put it in her pocket okay so just loose thievery is what's going on right yeah, now loose thievery. <laughs> right My okay favorite. so Right, so as you're kind of, if something catches your eye, you're putting it in there. Torg, what are you doing? So Torg is torn between trying to get this, the stone, but he can see Rhoda in the way. So he's maybe instead looking around for digging equipment. Like, maybe we can get to the falls another way. Uh, so he's looking for a pickaxe or a shovel and just seeing if there's anything like that around. Sure, go ahead and roll observation for me, and we'll see if you can look around and see anything that might help you. Um, uh, Sina, what did you receive on your... One survival and one crit fail. Okay. So with the survival, so, what you're right, able one to... One success and one crit fail. Gotcha. Uh, what you're able to figure out with your success that you have in combination with your earlier observation, as you're looking at the image that Zatoro pointed out, you can see that there is a relief of runes that you understand, and it says sunrise. But... As you're looking at everything and as you're kind of reading your own survival instincts, even having, having gone through the sluice, you realize that this sunrise picture, the sun is currently in the western uh, edge of the sky. So as the sun rises in the east, it is in the wrong place. Okay, the sun is wrong. What do you, what do you mean the sun is wrong? Uh, well, the sun it is not wrong or right. It just it hovers no, in the sky. This sun, this sun is wrong. This sun is in the west, but it says sunrise. Do you see the pro do you see the problem? Ah, uh, it is. It is on. Well, why didn't you just say it is on the wrong side? We would just switch them around. It's and it probably would... the water clogging my ears. 
that is it. It is you are waterlogged. Let let us just make it so. So maybe we can move it somehow. Maybe. Mm. I am okay. no luck with finding a replacement. If it can't be moved, I shall move it for you. My old eyes are not very good anymore, but my strength is still with me. Sure. All right, again, if you'd like to try to move the sun, uh, give me an athletics check. And everybody else, have you come up with anything for the heart itself? Okay, I'm just going to quickly check something because I've got something. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes. Right. Uh, I just want to check this. I've got a uh, talent called Strong Back for any athletics. To okay, so basically, uh, for any success I get on this athletics check with the Strong Back talent, I will gain one additional success matching my rank, which is one. So here's hoping. Uh, let's see. Athletics. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, three successes then, technically. Right, and then that's also below your threshold for an additional success, so that's four. So you guys have maxed out your momentum at this point, and easily, with the might of Artigan, the uh, sun moves in a now-revealed track from the western set edge of the sky to the east. There is a click, and a large section of the wall pops open, and... <laughs> Dust begins to settle where it came from. Um, at the same time, the lights in the room begin to flicker, and several of them start to blow out. Damn it. Can Rhoda go over and have a look, as if it's just see what this is opened up to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when it opens up and looks down, I will give you this one for free. It's darkness, and you can hear, though, relatively near the sound of what seems to be chanting. Uh, I, I, I believe we are not alone uh, down here, so I suggest whatever we do, we do it quickly. Was, did Gerald say anything about there being people down here? He I did not. I did not believe so. No, if, the, the free horses are fountains. Right, yes. Maybe... If need be, I can sneak on ahead and uh, see perhaps what we are what we are dealing with. That sounds good. I don't yes. want any surprises. You, you do good. that. Hold. All right. Uh, if you are loud and clanky, perhaps uh, hold back a little bit, and I'll I'll sneak up ahead. We will Sotolo. make we will look to uh, make the switch. I can be stealthy. Sotolo, hold. Mm -hmm. Let me give me one moment. Let me see if I can recall anything about history i have traveled may it, it's bad for me but the, the character would do this may i use my law to see if i could recall any information uh about the area and possibly people underground who would be chanting uh yeah this one's gonna be a uh difficulty two though because this is a uh sure you're not and, you don't have uh, a lot to go on here Sure. Can I uh, use momentum with that then? How does that work exactly? Absolutely. Uh, momentum's going to en enable you to, in this particular instance, uh, do, 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 let me see if anything applies. You can use, the only thing that's going to help you here is you can use fortune to automatically succeed if you like to spend a fortune point. Momentum's really gonna help you do specific actions. This is a uh, recollection of something. Um, unfortunately, it's not gonna help you too much. Okay, I'll just, just a regular law then. Uh, um, you never know, we might get lucky. Mm -hmm. He's been around. No, only one. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's close and you, you realize that, you know, you should probably have known, you probably have heard elements of this before, but being able to put it down with such limited information, it just, it's, it's just loosely out of your range of hearing. You're getting older. Um, you just can't hear it as well as you needed to. Oh, sorry, my mind, it's like a cloud fog now. 
No, it is it is okay. You are old. Just stay here, and I'll I'll see how many people that we have to kill uh, on our way out. Okay. No. Very well. If you don't have to kill them, Zatoro, maybe don't. But you know d- your discretion. But be quiet. I know you were going to do that, but well, yeah. No. Okay. Just for positive reinforcement, please. No, I think no. That's. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, watch witness Zetoro now. Uh, no, we don't want to witness. Wit- witness Zetoro as as he makes less noise than the footfall of a fly. How would we witness you if you were that quiet? Uh, don't, don't, to- don't push it. Just let him go. I, Rhoda, <laughs> it's so it's so hard. I I know, but it's best if he goes. <laughs> okay, so as you are all around the door talking to uh, Zatoro and everybody. Torg, um, I'd like you to roll an observation check for me. And there's one point I'm going to give you for free. No one seems to be paying attention at this moment to the heart of Krom. And and you you rolled a one. You're not really the best with these things, these numbers things. But it seems to you that every these candles seem to be going out, even though there's no new additional wind. So you're looking around as they're kind of almost in a chain. One candle's blowing out, the next candle's blowing out, the next candle's blowing out, the next candle's blowing out, and you're just kind of watching them as darkness is creeping in on the outskirts of this vault room. I will sneak away from the party towards the stone. (laughs) Okay, roll a stealth check for me. (laughs) Yep. So as everybody else normally would have an observation skill to oppose this, but you're all talking about how you're going to sneak into the other room. And Torg is able to, with the light going out of the room, he's not nearly as reflective and his oil doesn't glisten nearly as much. So there's nothing as much to catch the eye as he's able to back towards and now be standing beside the heart of Krom. Okay, now I'm, I'm not stupid, okay? Are you saying this aloud? <laughs> Is that a question? Or? <laughs> no, no. But I, I heard them talking about uh, replacing the weight. So first I will put one hand firmly around the bottom of the stone, and then I will lift the stone, putting pressure on the stone to keep the weight the same. Sure, roll no. a uh, athletics for me. Uh. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nailed it. Um, you switch it out and you can feel that that claw was ready to give, but your big meaty paw kind of slaps down on it and holds it there. Um, as the four of you as, uh, are arguing how you're going to be able to witness somebody be as quiet as a fly, you turn around and you see that Torg is now holding the heart of Krom and his hand is kind of interlaced in the talons of the petrified falcon, uh, claw. Uh, we See, have it's easy. We have the heart of Krom. We have a little bit of a problem. We have so uh, many problems right now. So Dog, many. If you could stay right where you are, that would be fantastic. And then I sort of turn to him and go, what? <laughs> what we, no, no, no. Yeah, we, we, we have to cut his hand off, I think. I, I, I'm going to no, cut the, a man's the hand off. Into my scarf. No, Torg, you could just toss it. It's going to get all sweaty. No, I've, I've heard of. I've heard about his kind. It will grow back if we cut it off. It doesn't matter. The pressure is gone. Get out of here. Hand off. Okay, real quick. Can I see the stone? If you let me see the stone, I'll give it back to you. I need to find something to put in place of your hand. This is just, it's just logic. I have been very Mark, sorry. It is a good idea. Listen. A... Damn it, Sumerian. You're not that thick. Come on. No, I am. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Okay, let me find some. I'm going to look around as fast as I can for something similar, and I'm going really, really fast. Hey, there's plenty okay. of gold. Yeah, uh, roll an observation check for me. Okay. Uh, this one's going to be two as the light in here has dimmed. Okay. Um, yes, now I see it. <laughs> it's bad. Um, 
Okay, 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 okay. I know where this is. Damn it. Okay, where are you? I will remind everybody that the fortune yeah. that you have can be spent for immediate successes. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it because we need to get out of here. The candles are going out. His how many, hand how many, how many fortune do we have? Three per session, unless you lost some of it in character creation. Right. Mm -hmm. So as you are... As a group. Each. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have two. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use one of my fortune. Screw this. Okay. <laughs> so as you spend one of your fortune, you are able to find what looks like a cup while not the same size, it's about the same weight. And you think that since it's a goblet, you might actually be able to kind of lace the stand or the base of the cup and put the stem in between the talons. It, it, the weight will be there. It might be distributed a little differently, but um, it's the best thing you can find weight-wise yeah. and that will fit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do a switch. It's going to have to be well-timed, buddy. And then we're going I'm, to get out of here. I mean, but what about, uh, we could just go back through the sluice. I mean, no, Gerald left how, that way. That's not how water works. He's probably preparing the horses. I did no, not hear a a very positive sound from Gerald. As, yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. Gerald is, is dead. Yeah. He's, I mean, so, I thought, he's so dead. I thought that was uh, pretty he clear. Has, uh, he has okay. joined his ancestors. Okay, Torg. All of you are so pessimistic. Yes, yes. For good yes. reason, dog. Get to my age, it's the only thing you see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try to do this switcheroo. No, do it the other way. Don't tell me that what to- That is the wrong way, dude, turn it. Oh, is it west turning, instead of east? Turning it wrong. Shut up, we have to move, God. Do it. There, okay, there okay. are about three candles still lit oh. in this room. Okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to get ready to move his hand and slip the cup. Like, right there. Would you like me to move his hand? Yes, I, probably. I'm quite capable of moving my hand. No, I think Rhoda should move your hand. We are very interested. I will help talk. It's fine. <laughs> She's very helpful. Okay, so what I would like is a... Let's do an acrobatics roll from Rhoda and uh, Senna to see if you guys can time this. Okay. Right. Okay. Got a one. Two successes. Oh. So expertly manipulating the hand of Torg, you are able to extricate it from the talons and at the same time, Senna is able to place the goblet, replacing Torg fingers with the stem of a golden cup. It stays for a moment. You detect a slight wobble, but it stays in place and does not move. Everyone, we need to get into the tunnel right now. The the, the behind the thing. We need to go. Okay. We need we to can go. go in the tunnel. But I'm just saying, we wasted a lot of time. If we took the stone when I said originally, I'm, just we... I'm walking away. Yeah, I was gonna say, Rhoda is already heading yeah, towards the tunnel. I'm with Rhoda. Me and Rhoda. Gone. <laughs> Out of gone. I'm too old. I'm gone. <laughs> okay. So as you all begin to walk out, who's the last person out of this area? Uh, probably Torg. Okay. So Torg, as the last bit of light glistens off a protruding pectoral muscle, um, the candle goes out and the glisten dies in both chest and wick. And as soon as it does, you see the creep of light as large sections of the outer wall begin to slide. And as they open, you see shadows start to emerge and a horn goes off. Torg, what did you do now? Uh, yeah, if you're trying to be quiet, everybody, I'd like that stealth check now. Oh, God. Oh, no. Uh, here we go. Uh, from everyone, Greg, or from... Oh, anyone that wants to be quiet, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Two. <laughs> Ooh, uh, crit. Oh, no. Everybody, no. everybody crit in this bad boy. Yeah, two. Oh, one, actually. <laughs> nice. So you guys are maxed out with momentum. And uh, you are all quiet as the grave as you are able to get in. Now, I will ask this, since Torg's the last one out, 
Torg, do you close or try to close the door behind you guys? What the? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the answer is no. And as, <laughs> so as you guys, as you guys slip down, Torg's bulk kind of uh, it, it dwarfing the actual size of this cavern. It's not a, a naturally constructed hallway as per would be the specs of a citadel where you can move, you know, five to 10 people across. This is a very narrow, not near, it's almost like too tight for Torg as he's going through there and some of the larger guys. Um, but you're able to kind of, everyone's able to kind of hunch over and make it through. And when you get further down this darkened tunnel, you can see light up ahead that's enough to kind of continue manipulating the tunnel by. And as you get further up, the chanting gets louder and louder and louder. And when you get to the edge, you see that there is a fine mesh. Um, it's very difficult to see exactly what it is, but it seems to be translucent to the point where you can see shapes beyond it but you would have to get closer and touch this material to see exactly what it is. There are shapes behind it. Um, you can see like uh, uh, almost it's translucent to the point where this substance is uh, allowing you to see that there are objects and you see movement behind this substance, but you can't, you know, it's not uh, transparent where you can make out exactly what it is. It's just shapes. It's just shadow. Mm. Does anything look? I mean, I think the next thing we're looking for is a fountain, right? As a mark. Correct. Yeah. Out of here. Does anything look like static or larger than the other, the moving shapes? You don't see anything. I mean, there's, I mean, it's to the point where it's just a blob here, a blob there, a walking blob. You can't tell anything geometrically or, mm -hmm. you know, exactly how it's going, but. It seems to be, this is the only way to continue. Right. Are we touching this? Are we cutting it? Nick, this is weird. Uh, can I, would I be able to like, uh, just get closer and look at it and uh, see what I can like observe off of it, like what it's made of, what it might be? Yeah, roll an observation for me. Okay. Seems to be canvas. Ooh, uh, I would uh, like to quietly use my my poniard, and and see if I can't cut a slit into it and see beyond it. Sure, yeah, and with an observation skill like that, if you want to spend one momentum here, I'll allow you to do it without making a roll. Oh, totally, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because you guys are maxed out at six right yeah. now, so yeah. Okay, so you are able to do so, and as you cut and look through you realize just with your periphery that you are about an inch away from the frame of a very large painting. And you are peering out from the painting right now. Uh, what you can see beyond you is you see a, what maybe once was a beautiful marble and gilded fountain is now decadent. It is smeared with candles of black wax. And you see from the edge of this little area, several robed figures robed in black and red that seem to be kneeling and lifting and bowing and kneeling in a, a, a three stage salute of some kind. Can I like, I mean, approximately how many, can I count them? How many do I, do I see? You see three, but hear many more. Okay. All right, and I'll uh, I'll turn back and look at the others in the tunnel, and I'll say uh, I'll do this like that, like I'm trying to signal to them that there's more than three I in there. I feel like priests or something. No, that's that that's fine. That makes that means that they're soft. They're like butter. Okay. Um, this One, makes uh, me feel really bad. Um, don't. No, they have like black wax in the next room. <laughs> uh, it's probably made out of people. Uh, let's just, let's do this and get on with our way. Oh, I feel bad. Okay. Um, I'm going to notch my arrow. Um, I can shoot two loads at once. 
because I'm super cool. Sure, yeah, you can go to do that. And as you're going to do that, Torg, roll an observation for me, please. One with a crit failure, which is another point of doom for me. Um, and I, I'm going to go ahead and use it right now. Uh, Torg, as you turn around and look back the way that you came, you see just a hint, like a gleam across a a piece of a metal headband as three men are about 10 feet behind you. Their swords are out as they are creeping forward and you turn around and see them just as they were getting ready to launch an attack into you. How much time do I have to react? Am I like, are they like attacking me or do I have time to sort of like meld he into the shadows? Now that we're at a nice little place right here, here's the beauty of the Conan system. The players always have initiative, unless I spend Doom to put one of my people up first. But um, as of right now, you have the initiative to do whatever you would like, Torg. If you want to charge into these guys, you can charge right into them. If you want to hide, you can hide. Um, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, so Okay, so I'd like talk to um slip back into the shot maybe into the side of the cavern so that he can like try and spring them and i don't know if there's a way he could simultaneously try and warn people but like ah they'll probably be all right so he's just gonna slip back into the shadows as they're coming down. The front. okay as as mentioned in the narrative these tunnels are this tunnel is super small and oh, yeah, torg yeah. torg is already kind of a you know golf ball in a garden hose right now so um if you <laughs> if you want to try to hide i'm gonna allow you to do it but it's gonna be a stealth at two you're gonna have yeah, to have nah, a stealth nah, nah. you're basically gonna be moving around these people as they you know like dip in a pack and pop in a pack as they cross in front of you and you're hoping that they don't notice or smell the oil okay so another system question yep how bad will it get if i fail my stealth does that like hand over my go like no nope. so if you want i'm gonna allow you to do it because i want to see it <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. come on scratch <laughs> do it almost and and and, and luckily yeah. so as you move back and uh yeah ace just said in chat you know uh uh sumerians can hide in rock because of their they look almost like rock and as the incredibly dense peck and a dense bicep almost blend into the naturally hewn uh, uh surface around them the first gentleman goes past not noticing at all that he is literally squeezing past this larger man but the second one goes by and he brushes a piece of loincloth and it feels decidedly different than <laughs> the rock around him as perhaps the the only area on Torg that betrays him is his modesty as the man stops, realizes in horror, one, what's against his hand, and two, how close he is to an enemy. He turns and looks eyes wide and gleaming more than the, the gold headband that he's wearing. Torg, what would you like to do? Okay, yeah. I guess he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. I'll grab his chin and slam his head against the rock. <laughs> okay, so for our first shot here at combat, I want you to roll. Um, let's go ahead and roll an athletics check here, and I'm going to make it an improvised four damage. So if you uh, go ahead and hit this guy with athletics, you're going to... Improvised. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just I just had a thought come into my mind. What's he improvising with? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, right. Okay, so what we'll do is you have a, a point of momentum coming to you anyway, but I'm going to have you go ahead and um, do you have that combat dice? I can, I'll can i roll it for you. Um, you get three damage from this uh, with the point of momentum that you've generated and the fact that you're slamming this guy's head into the wall. So it's a total of seven combat dice that will be rolled. Okay, so as these all come down, you are able to smash this guy for uh, f four damage. 
and a special event. The special event is this guy dies badly as you crush his head against the rock the guy behind him still had no idea that torg was there and as he just sees the man who it was he was recently playing uh bones with get his head flattened against the wall by what he thought was the wall he stops and fumbles for his knife as he begins to pull it out the man in front doesn't even look back as he continues towards uh <laughs> the other people as uh Artigan, I get I think you're the next one up. Um roll in observation to see if you hear anything from the stealthy Torg. Oh man. <laughs> what's what's good in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to deal with the loincloth of the Sumerian. <laughs> right. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know where was all of these. Oh I actually got one. There you go. So Artigan, as you kind of sit there and you're not really up against what's going on at the at the painting, you turn around and look, and in the light that's now kind of your eyes are adjusting to this this transparency coming through the canvas, you turn and you see Torg, who looks like he's getting ready to like clothesline the guy that's behind two back, but he's also smashed flat the head of the guy that's in between his hand and the wall. You see another guy creeping forward, and this is all kind of a staggered view that you see. Um, what would you like to do as we are now in initiative? These two poor bastards will be going last, <laughs> as is the Conan rules. Artigan, what would you like? Um, well, Artigan, he is just going to slowly unsheathe his sword. And as he does, you see a glistening from the light that's coming through the canvas, sigils and markings that identify the sword as once being forged and made by the lost city of Atlantis and their people. He brings it up, turns it facing down, puts it in front of him, just stands there, looks at the guy coming towards him and just says, Leave or die. Okay. So are you trying to threaten him with, uh, are you trying to, they, there's an element in Conan where you can basically swing your sword in a, in a, a dizzying display of prowess. You can put a blade to somebody's throat. You can basically punk them out. Are you trying to punk this guy out? Um, or are you just, just it, it, is I'm that a precursor to fighting? A, right? I'm, I've just given him a stark warning. If he proceeds any further, he is dead. I am giving him a chance to walk away. I don't care about what the others may do, but I'm giving him a chance to walk away. Okay. Um, if you want to do that, you can roll me a command roll from underneath the uh, social aspect as you turn to do this. Meanwhile, just over his shoulder, you can see Torg as the last of the skull gives, and it reaches the ground as apparently oh, the guy second in line did not get a very good... Oh, I don't give a care what the Sumerian's doing. Um, okay. So, um, what's, what role is this? I beg your pardon? It's a command role. It should be down in your skill section underneath uh, okay. social or persuasion, something like that. Got it. Okay. <laughs> he two, two sees you, and maybe it's the Atlantean sword that he sees. Maybe it's just the demeanor. Maybe it's the edge in your voice. But he looks and begins to back away as uh, he has no will to speak of. And just in case it would give you guys a benefit, I'll roll this. Uh, no, you beat him with it anyway. So as he is able to creep back, he turns to run and run straight into the horror show that's going on between Torg and the guy in the second line. Observation from Rhoda to see if she sees all this going on. Uh, this one can be rolled, uh, You the, the the DC on this one is one, and I'm gonna give you an extra die to roll because he uh, Artigan said something right behind you. So okay, change the dice so to roll, three, yeah. Roll that twice, sorry, or? Yeah, you can roll twice, that's, yeah. that's fine. Oh dear, so I got one and and uh, well, yeah, a crit basically, an anti-crit. 
Right. Yes. Yeah, so we'll go with the first one as you turn around and hear him. And you can see now that Torg is surrounded by two gentlemen. Uh, there appears to be a third, which is smashed against the wall. All of this has been done incredibly quietly. Uh, yet Artigan is standing kind of spread eagled across the tunnel, not allowing any passage. You have the ability to act here. You could probably get by him if you needed to. So can I, the one that's backing up, can I just pull out my saber and just try quickly slice his throat? Absolutely. And I like that. That's <laughs> gleefully serious. So. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> so yeah, just go down to the bottom, or uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, this one is a um, a brawn roll. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Is it just a just brawn straight out? It's a melee. Under, I'm sorry, underneath agility melee. Um. Uh, the third one down. I'm sorry, I got yeah, my places the, confused. Yeah, um, the brawn just out. All right. Okay. I think that's. Oh, there we go. oh no, I'm sorry. It's agility. Go up to agility, uh, very yeah. first one. My bad, everybody. Oh, agility down yeah, to melee. Me. Yeah, my bad. Um, I got two. Okay, so with two, I'd like you to go ahead and if you go down to your saber, which is at the bottom mm -hmm. of your character sheet, um, yep. go, go ahead and roll the die beside there, and we'll see exactly what you do to this poor person. Um, the modifier to dice, mine's at zero. Do I need to keep it at that or? Yes, yes, that's yeah. perfectly fine. Right. Uh, that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Nothing and one damage. So you're able to, as you reach forward, you're able to draw a line across his throat, but it's, it's more of him trying to get away from Artigan. And as he's moving, you're able to draw that line and he reaches up and is in horror, but uh, he's able to continue backwards. And now he doesn't as, know what to do. As um, he does that, I'm almost again doing that as a warning. I just put like my finger to my lips, just like, as in be quiet and then I go back to the painting and I sort <laughs> of like look at Artigan at the same time like if they escape they talk and just keeps and goes back to the painting I love the idea that she turned around tried to slit the guy's throat and then goes back to more important things there's, <laughs> there's nothing better anymore. he's got too many problems <laughs> right listen you know, I've got there's a painting up here oh okay so let's they go back up to be talking <laughs> right, and Zator, I, and, uh, I just got, and I've just got this sort of like knowing, creeping smile coming across my face. Oh yeah, he's already petrified of you, dude. Yeah, I know. I know who's behind him. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, he's he's absolutely. You know, he, the, the the front of his trousers are wet. He's doesn't doesn't know what to do at this point. Um, I need to know what uh, Senna and Zatoro are doing. I have. You guys been... both heard this by now because you heard the exchange and the ruffling and. I am of Rhoda's disposition, and I do not care doing more important things. Um, I'm going to, I, yeah, I guess we were talking about shooting these robed guys. So I'm going to shoot them with my arrows. Okay. You're going to totally shoot them with? I do it. Sure thing. Uh, give me, you get to fire twice, so yes. give me two of those bad boys. Um <clears throat> ranged weapons and i think i get to roll i get an extra d20 yes yep okay so here's the first one uh, can i change this yes good so that's one and then i roll it again yep okay and same thing so total of three Okay, so uh, you guys are maxed out again with six momentum. Um, as you fire both of those, two, the t I'm assuming you're going with the two that are farther farthest back from you mm -hmm. all. The ones that they, could run away. They drop lifelessly to the ground as arrows are protruding from their ears as the expert marksmanship of Senna through the painting is able to fire and the 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 fletching of the arrows actually passes straight through the slit that Satoro made and it's just perfect Boom! right through two of the ears the person beside doesn't even notice as they continue this prayer but uh two of the people are bowing and will never rise again Satoro, what would you like to do uh, i'll look uh, over at chenna and and i'll uh and Zatoro says you only killed two of them why not 
Why not kill three of them? You, why did you only kill the two? I do not understand. Okay, stay here. I'm going to go kill the others. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and he'll uh, finish cutting down. Don't shoot like, him. Don't waste an arrow on him. Do not do it. <laughs> finish cutting down to the canvas painting, and uh, and try to try to slip into the next room, um, as quietly as possible, and and just I guess get ready to uh, well to murder every priest in the room basically okay here's what we'll do as soon as you round this corner you get a much better view of the fountain as soon as you don't have that kind of narrow window that you were looking through in the painting um you see that the fountain itself is wide with these black candles with the wax dripping down along the outside the air itself is very thick with some type of incense that is being burned. It's a pleasant smelling incense, but it's it's almost overpowering, like there's way too much of it. And as everybody is continuing to kneel, and as you peel away from what was a column right beside the painting, you see that there are at least four dozen of these priests that are continuing to kneel and bow and kneel. And at the very top, facing away from you, is a large figure in black and red robes that has a staff that they are lifting above their heads in unison with everybody rising and kneeling and bowing and rising and kneeling and bowing. It's like a bizarre cultish aerobics class as it's being led in this position. Right. <laughs> Let's get physical. And um, as you're standing there looking at it, um, what would you like to do now as any engagement with the final priest? The two bodies are farthest back and they don't seem to be noticed by the closest one. But as soon as you move within that group, you're going to be among priests. Um, how many did you say? There's like four dozen? Yeah, there looks to be about four dozen. <laughs> All right. Uh, how how far back is uh, <clears throat> is the, the big dude that they're... That sort of it, it ostensibly is in charge of the ceremony how far back is he or he's a good like 35 40 yards at an elevated dais so this is almost like a reverse auditorium where normally there would be like a lower stage and higher seating uh this is like the seating is lower looking upwards almost like a ziggurat type of setup all right is there is is the entire chamber like fully lit or are there shadows Oh, it's very, it's heavily shadowed. Yeah, it's heavily okay. shadowed and it's it's got almost like a low level or like a mid-level fog going through it because this incense is so prevalent, which makes me want to tell you to do this. Uh, please roll a resistance check as Rag. this is also, this is also drugged incense. Oh, Rag. where is, uh, I'm trying to look for that. Okay, under brawn. Ooh, okay. <laughs> you have fortune. She calls out in her head. Yes, I do. I'll you go do. ahead. Yes, I do. I'll spend one. I only have two. I'll spend one right now to resist the uh, the narcotics uh, that are, are filling my head. Okay. So as the narcotics begin to uh, sink into you, you're able to push them back, and you felt dizzy for a second. You think that maybe if it had caught it, it had caught you full throat, you may have coughed. You may have gone to one knee. Even as it stands, your vision's not blurry, but it's kind of tunneled a bit as the sides are relaxing. You feel great. Um, <laughs> you feel like you could chant for hours, but <laughs> that's not really what you need to do right now. Um, <laughs> momentum. Uh, from, who would you like to give momentum to, my friend? And I will make sure that they receive it. Uh, just go ahead and put it in chat there, brother. Um as you are sitting there and you see the rest of these, that'll be the end of your turn as you kind of force yourself out. Unless you want to move somewhere else, I'll allow you to do that. Um, can I kind of reposition? Is there, didn't you say there were like uh, like pillars in there? Or am I thinking of, a, of the previous vault? Uh, previous vault. This one has a okay. very open space. Okay. Just think of the side of a ziggurat. At the top is the person facing away leading the aerobics class. At the bottom behind all the priests is the fountain. That is covered in the uh, the black candles and is burning. Um, All right. There also seems I'll, to be something in the water of the fountain, but you're too far away to see. All right. I'll just try to stick to the shadows as best I can and, and uh, maybe reposition myself just sort of off to the side of where the painting was so that uh, the others can follow through and, uh, and hopefully help me uh, kill 48 people. 
And just to show the right, just to show you the the benevolence that I am, I was going to spend a doom point to have somebody notice you, but because uh, Castle Mac just uh, Sean just spent a momentum specifically for brew you are able to dip into the shadows a second before somebody turns around and blows out a gout of their own smoke that would have put them in direct eye line with you but you disappear just as it happens all right very good uh yeah i'll just then i'll just go ahead and try to stay as still as possible and and wait for uh wait for the wait for basically wait for backup before we clear the room Okay, so we go back to Torg, who is surrounded by these two guys. Uh, the third guy in the row, who has just witnessed the smooshing of his friend, he pulls out his sword and attacks, and he does manage to score a hit on Torg, as it is for one damage in the left leg. So as you're standing there, he swipes down and cuts into the rock-hard quad, dangerously close to the loincloth, of Torg as he's standing there kind of holding it up, not knowing exactly what to do. And as the petrified man that is turning and beginning to flee from uh, Artigan sees that Torg is in his way, he too attacks. But he fails hideously as his saber that he has in his hands clatters and falls to the ground. Um, luckily, it brushes against the uh, fur-clad boot of Torg, muffling the sound of clattering metal. We go back up to the top of the initiative, Torg. You've got two people. One just cut you in your leg. <laughs> You're going to regret that. I'm just going to walk forward and grab him. <laughs> are you grabbing with the intent to grab? Or are you grabbing with the intent to squeeze? Uh, bit of both. One hand on wrist, the other hand on throat. Okay, so you're going to, like, marionette this guy to death. You're, like, controlling his movements and robbing him of life. Great. Uh, roll me another athletics check here for each score or success. You're going to be able to roll a damage die, and we'll see exactly what happens here. Two athletics. Okay, and if you want to add momentum, you can add a third damage die to this as well. Definitely. Okay, I want, I want you guys to be able to feel free to get into the habit of dropping those momentum mm -hmm. because they are your currency to do things cool. Um, if you have that macro up of the combat dice, go ahead and roll three of those for me. I did have that. I did have that. Yep. Okay, and then roll seven more. <laughs> As Torg is a big son of a bitch. <laughs> This He's is so gonna dead. suck. I'm so dead. Okay, so uh, with three and the special events for this type of graph grapple is basically bleed damage. So you, f which do you want to feel go first, his throat or the shoulder joint, as you wishbone him? Oh, I feel like it'd be the shoulder joint. Though I think I think nail might draw blood from the throat, but I'm not gonna crush it. Just you know, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't wanna outright kill him straight away. Um. It'd be the shoulder, definitely the shoulder pop. <laughs> okay, so you feel his arm suddenly grow about two or three inches longer as you pop it from the joint and every muscle and tendon and ligament that's holding it into place stretches and begins to tear and rip as you're holding and pulling him apart. He would scream bloody murder, but your hand on his throat is preventing any air from getting out as the life begins to just bleed out of his eyes. Um... Artigan, you see what's going on here. You have been ordered by Rhoda that if anybody leaves, they will tell somebody what would you like to do. As you see Torg, who is deceptively quiet in killing these people. <laughs> I just, um, I just, I'm still in that position. And I just say to Rhoda, always play for tactical advantage. Then, Wham! To the guy's back. Okay, so this is going to be... He has no idea... Well, I mean, he has an idea that you're there. But what I'm going to have you do with this one is add a third attack die, a third d20 to this. Uh, roll, and with every success, you get to roll damage from your Atlantean melee. broadsword. Yeah, melee, please. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, dear God. 
So roll your sword uh, once, and then we're going to bank two momentum unless you want to roll your damage die again. I will spend the momentum to roll another damage die. Yep, go right ahead. So roll them so twice. and Roll it twice. Okay. Okay, so no modifier. Six and seven. Okay, so... At this point, Torg is wearing two things. Three things, probably, and I'm not, I don't want to speak out of turn or take away player agency, but I would guess there's a grin involved. I would guess the loincloth is still there, and now a nice, fine mist of blood has kind of settled, and where the oil is making him sheen, the blood is giving him this sinister effect as everything, the eyes become whiter, the teeth become whiter, as Torg is just covered in a fine mist as this man's head leaves shoulders as it rolls to the ground as Artigan has just, you know, separated head from body. You two guys are there amongst the bodies, all of them in horrific states, I need to go back up to the top and know exactly what uh, Rhoda and uh, Cinna would like to do as you are the two closest to the now open painting. Do we see any kind of, like, as, you know, Zatora went out, I would have been trying to track him. Um, did we see kind of what he did? Yeah, you can still see Zatora okay. standing right there as he's, okay. you saw him like go back and disappear into the shadows. Mm -hmm. But uh, at this point, you can start smelling this uh, incense, too, and it's very, very, almost, you can almost taste it. Do we see any kind of light? <laughs> the riddle of the loincloth, love it. Uh, yeah, everything's kind of lit. You can see, you know, the candles and everything. You can see the fountain now better. Uh, you can't, from this position, see the 40-plus right. priests. You can still see the one that you didn't kill. Yeah. But uh, the 40 others are invisible to you. And Zatoro's just waiting. He seems he's to be hiding. Uh, I mean, there's. He's probably looking really cool, whatever he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he's... Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let's hope he doesn't look cool because he's supposed to be hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Witness me look so cool. It's a cool hiding. Okay. Right. Uh, I look at Rhoda. Say, well, he's hiding. Um, we want to move quickly, quietly. I do not believe he'd be hiding from one man. I, he seems to show <laughs> off a lot that. that he can kill multiple. So. I mean, he says that, but have you ever seen it? Because I have not. This is also very true. So we try to sneaky sneak out of here. Uh, I, I guess we could. And what she does, she takes the scarf off from around her head and ties it around oh, her nose and mouth. Nice. Um, because she can smell something it is very stinky That's can i effectively idea. like sneakily stick my head out <laughs> can see that might look a bit weird if anyone looks at the painting oh well, yeah you can absolutely if you want to roll a stealth you can sneak out but you can like go for an observation if you want you don't think they're looking back this far but um i'll go ahead and give it to you that you haven't seen anybody kind of cock an eye back this way so if you stick your head out you see everything that zatoro saw you see that there are, are a ton of these people out here Okay, I sort of pull my head back in. We we do have a little bit of a problem. Okay. <laughs> there there is not one. Uh, there is a fair few out there which could explain why he is hiding. Right. Did you cool, see an in exit? a cool fashion? Yes, very cool. I assume. <laughs> Did you see an exit. And I just go ah, and can I stick my head back through the painting, please? And just you want me to help you? Is... Maybe we can both. Yeah. We both sort of stick our head through. So yeah, as you guys like Muppet caper this and stick like one <laughs> head out and then one head below you guys, as you guys look out up that way, you're able to see that at the top of the ziggurat in the direction that the man is facing uh, mm -hmm. or the, the, the being is facing, you're able to see that there appears to be an exit that way and there may be one behind you, but whatever that one is, is sealed off by some type of door. Which way? We could try to sneak and get through that door. Is that door closer to the fountain? Uh, the fountain is right in front of you. Zatoro oh. did not get close enough to see anything more of the fountain than uh, what you guys were able to kind of. Okay, well, I will look at the fountain before we get out and we decide what the heck we are doing. 
Okay, so as you go out and look at the fountain, it is covered in this black wax. It is covered in these, these drippings. Um, but in the fountain proper, which is large, maybe 10 feet wide, are floating the heads of several human beings. And as they bob, some of them even have eyes that are looking as they kind of roll through this ichor of blood and water or whatever type of viscous fluid is in there. Um, the eyes kind of look. And as you guys are looking there and as you're kind of peering into this fountain, um, you remember the words of Gerald. It didn't say the fountain. It said through the fountain. Through the fountain. Ew. I point at it. So we have to go into the room? I, I think so. Well, is I mean, no offense to Artigan and Torg, but they are not the quietest of people. We just, uh... So we... We no. Oh, well, <laughs> she's sort of thinking for a second of how are we gonna do this. Come here, Rhoda. Come, come here. <laughs> We're going to get then, I think. Can I you know, them? Rhoda giving no credit to Artigan and Torg, who just killed three cats <laughs> so silently. Yeah. yeah, no, she gets that at the same time, but she doesn't think that they would be able to resist killing them. Mainly Torg, as they walk past, either. Can I hear so... them? No, you guys are still back in the uh, amongst right. the dead. Yeah. Through the fountain. I, I understand that they are doing well back there. Uh, but this is a room full of many people. And the fountain makes noise anyway. Okay, let's try I to... don't think there is any way we're going to do this in a uh, sneaky fashion. Yeah, good point. Okay. But we do have a talk. I'm sure you could yes, do something very, about very the people strong. in the room. Okay. I guess. Do you want to tell them? About the room? I could do. And I just sort of <laughs> look over. Is it sort of the, the three are dead now, aren't they? The three um, people who were coming after us. Yeah, Torg and Artigan, what are you guys doing as you're standing there among the dead? We're out of initiative order, so you guys can go ahead and do whatever you'd like as you are. Well, for now, we're out of initiative order. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at Torg and I just say, Shane, we could have asked for another way out from one of them. <sighs> Children, no patience. Let's go. You are muted. But it sounds very emphatic. Yeah, I, mean, I can hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say, uh, I find generally when you keep going through people, eventually you find a way out. That's some Winnie the Pooh wisdom right there. <laughs> <laughs> Talking is a Winnie the Pooh wisdom. Yeah. Right. Has anyone told us about this room being full of priests or anything? Rhoda's That's about what to. I'm just coming to do. Literally about to. I was stepping, gonna say because like... I'm stepping over these bodies, sort of muttering to myself, "Very messy killers," like because I'm assuming there's like a pulp on the wall and everything else. Um, we have a slight problem. We have a room full of. Well, I'm not too sure what they are specifically, but they stand in our way. I figured you two would want to do something about that. Well, we could have asked one of these gentlemen for another way. Yes, but they're not here anymore. And I... we are short of time. And that's why you are impatient, child, with getting me to kill them. And I just walk by her. Okay, either way, he's going the direction I want. Come on, talk. And uh, <laughs> Talk's going to pick up one of the bodies. Okay, <laughs> as you as you pick up the which one do you pick up? There's a headless one, a smashed head one, and the one with the arm almost off. Uh, the one, the one with the arm almost off, the most intact one. Yeah. Okay, you pick up that body, and I'd like Rhoda and Torg to roll observation checks for me, please. Okay. A two. Ooh, nice. Nice. So as you reach down and pick up this body and you pull it up into position, uh, Torg and Rhoda, as one, you guys look down the hallway and you see six more of those headbands advancing through the tunnel 
as they are creeping towards you, just as you pull up the body of presumably one of the people they probably take the table with every night. And that stops the person up front, but these seem to be potentially made of sterner stuff. They are still quiet, though, as they creep further toward you all. And that is where we will end this episode of Conan Age Undreamed Of. As, no! Uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we will con- two hours no! <laughs> There we go, folks. There we go. We will conclude this episode next week as we find out exactly what happens to our cast as they delve deeper into the temple to escape with the heart of Krom. But um, I will let everybody know that Firefly is going to be starting here in about 15-ish minutes. Uh, Stick around for that. But before we go anywhere, I would like to go around to my folks. We'll go in reverse order this time as we start with Torg himself. Scrat. What'd you think, brother? And what's going oh. on? I know, but you tell everybody. Oh, the man, I'm, I'm, this is a great system. I love it. You can kill people so easily. It's so much fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like a badass. I'm on a complete high right now, and I'm absolutely great. Um, should I like? Should I like, sell my stuff as well? Do we do that or like? Absolutely. What's going yeah. on tomorrow? What what, oh. what the what the hell's going on tomorrow, Scrat? There, oh, there's your leader. Not, not just tomorrow. <laughs> T- tonight we have another stream before tomorrow. Oh. And then tomorrow, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're just, we're, we don't even know what we're playing. We're just playing like an apocalypse style thing. We're going to completely add a little bit. It'll be around 4 p.m. Um, tomorrow, we are doing a 24 hour stream for charity. For ra- ra- all, It's going to Race Texas uh, for the uh, immigrant families on the border. Um, we're going to do, well, it was 24, but now it's 25 and a half because before Greg takes the 7 a.m. session, we're going to have Chelsea and Tool School in for a DM's desk. Um, oh. Before me, you say? I know, I know. You, you don't get to open anymore, I'm afraid. <laughs> Only if you wear that wig. Yeah. <laughs> I've got another outfit for tomorrow. Uh, I'll put some links in chat for people. But yeah, that's that's the, that's the, uh, the most pressing thing, is, is the charity stuff. Absolutely. Charity tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be there from 7 to 10 Eastern running my own Cthulhu module for the first play test. It's called Fly the Eldritch Skies. It takes place in 1969 on a transatlantic flight from London to Miami. There's going to be hippies. There's going to be crazy stuff. It'll be fun. So let's cut right above to Alice. Alice, what did you think? I, I love this system, this game, everything so much. I, I liked actually being fairly sassy for once rather than I sort of do t- either end of the scale and it was quite nice putting it together. I like all these characters interacting with each other and I'm already super hyped for next week. So, but yeah, um, I am White Rabbit Pick. Also, the other half of Scraticus, I will be in the um, DM's desk with Tool School and Little Red Dot as well uh, tomorrow. And I will be doing one, I think 1 p.m. EST, I will be running the session. So yeah. And like I said, it's all for a good cause. So Fantastic all around. Um, I love everything you guys do. This is my first time playing with Alice and I had a, such a blast. I love the way that your R- Rhoda is just, just, <laughs> she's almost she's like reminds me of like a sassy 70s sitcom like Alice Diner or like somebody that's just like just so just get this done and it, I what was it Go gleefully yeah. serious that is exactly what it is you define well, it I've perfectly loved it for being me first time on here I love it I'm really good yeah uh, I, you, I can't Greg. wait so many yeah it's really good Greg like... oh yeah. well, thank you much brother Plus the uh, hair is immersed. fabulous. I just want to say the hair, like you rock it. <laughs> Goes with the beard. Right? You're on a shampoo advert. Absolutely. Let's see if we can make that happen. Um, <laughs> next week's episode brought to you by like Pert or something. Uh, some like 80s version. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, the only guy that gets it. Brew's like, I got it, man. Yeah. Um, I used all right, it, let's... I used it in college. Guilty as charged. <laughs> actually, actually had some. Yeah. Right. Let's go up north to Cap Cap. What do you think, brother? Uh, yeah, that was um, definitely a new system, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, simple to learn. Uh, simple to learn, perhaps hard to master, especially when the difficulty of the successes come into play later on. So it's going to be use that momentum pull and use that fortune pull to get your proverbial butt out of the fire. But no, thank you very much. Uh, that was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, 
I'm Capricorn Cross. Uh, Capricorn Cross. There we go. All one word. Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I basically do uh, role playing content. I do a lot of prep content as well. I have my own uh, 5e story and character focus show called the Chronicles of Cascadas that will continue next Tuesday at 8 p.m. UK time. Got some fantastic players on that. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, thank you very much for having me. And I'm looking forward to coming back again next week. So, Greg and everyone, thank you very much. Love it, brother. Love it. And we'll cut down to Lauren. Lauren, what did you think today? I had a great time. I really, really enjoyed this story a lot. I liked uh, the dynamic that Cinna and Rhoda have. We know what's up. We know what's up. And I enjoyed that very much. Um, you can find me on Twitter at that salty ginger. And let's see, tomorrow night, me and Brew and Greg are over on the Greyhawk channel at 9 p.m. Eastern doing some D&D 5e going to be lots of fun i've been looking forward to the second session of that all week and then back here on sunday night at 7 p.m eastern for project athena poke the loo game of my heart i love it so come see that and i will see you all weekend G goodbye greg goodbye goodbye lauren until goodbye. tomorrow bye i'll see you then and last but not least zatoro himself brew what did you think brother Oh no, I had a I had a great time. Uh, I like that uh, that our group is not afraid to do stupid stuff. Sometimes uh, that makes things really interesting. You know, not like, afraid uh, they embrace it. <laughs> I know, right? It's it's that's no, yeah, that's our mo. I like that. It's like, well, my, you know, what makes the most uh, the most sense here? Let's do the opposite. You know, so I I really like that because it's a lot of fun. Um, so right now, uh, I'm, I'm just me. You can find me on Twitter at Brewhammer uh, D and D, like D as in dog, N as in Nancy, D as in dog. Um, I'm here every Friday, or not every Friday, but like I guess like every other Friday uh, on Age of Conan, or whenever this our schedule permits, and uh, also uh, on Saturday nights uh, on the Greyhound Channel with Greg and Lauren for uh, Valley of Soot and Skull. Absolutely, brother. Everybody's links are in chat, but I'm going to throw them back up one more time so everybody can follow these lovely, lovely people because they are the best. Um, as for uh, mentioned me, I'm Grimjack21502. Please follow up if you haven't followed. We are going to be starting up with a little bit of Firefly here in the next 15 minutes. You don't want to miss that. Also, I am currently downloading uh, the uh, Strider-approved intro for Conan. So if you stick around at some point during Firefly, maybe at the end, maybe at the beginning, I would like to play Conan just for everyone that stuck around in the next week and for the foreseeable future. We will lead off the show with it. But but um, it's awesome. You guys are awesome. This cast was really, really fun. To explain a couple things, we have 10 people in this cast. So this crew will be back next week to finish this particular uh, section of the tale. And then you'll see similar faces. You'll see new people come in as the tale of this particular group is told over several years. Uh, once again, please follow here on the channel. Tomorrow we have... Um, the 24 hour charity stream over, uh, with Scrat and Alice. And then in the afternoon for me from two to four, I have project, uh, Kronos, my Pulp Cthulhu show tomorrow night on Greyhawk from nine until whenever we finish S uh, Sunday project Athena from seven to nine. Monday on Encounter Roleplay, Atomic Cthulhu, 4.30 to 7.30. Web DM on Tuesday evenings from seven to seven to 10. Uh, Wednesdays, Cthulhu on Encounter Roleplay from one to four. Tomes and Tentacles podcast, all the fun stuff, all the things. Flash Gordon coming soon to the channel. But until then, everybody, we are here in the... Yeah, that's right, Scrat. Flash Gordon coming to the channel. <laughs> so, everybody... Gordon's alive. Gordon's alive. Yeah, um, no, okay, I, so... I, I met him in a bar one time. No matter how much beer you put in him, he won't say it. Really? <laughs> oh, that's horrible. It's been asked too much. I, I would put that's that sad. to the test. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, I wanted good. to I, I, I announce, let me double check here, but I'm pretty sure we have a new thief as Ozzy has donated to join the game as a member of the crew. So where there were 10, there are 11, everybody, down in the doobly-doo donation section, you can become a thief. Ozzy has going to be joining us as our very first 
guest star on this show. I can't wait. Just played with him this past weekend. Fantastic fellow. Follow him as well. Uh, uh, you'll see him in chat right here. Hopefully, blue, 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 go up. Uh, Karamid, you'll find him. Follow him. He's awesome. He'll be on soon. But until next time, everybody, we'll be in the age undreamed of. Join us next week. Perfect. <laughs>